this is Painting Like Pollock, and here with this week's featured style is your host, Cameron Thompson. Hey guys, welcome to Painting Like Pollock. Today we're going to talk about abstract expressionism, and we are going to examine line and form and composition, things like that. We're going to look at subject matter. And the painting that we have beside us is an abstract expressionist painting. Some of the paintings that we have in the background are also abstract expressionist paintings. Um, we are also going to paint our own today and we will look at all of those elements while we do it. The first thing that we're going to talk about are supplies. And we have a canvas. It is pre-stretched, which means that it's on a frame. Um, you can use any kind of canvas that you would like. It doesn't have to be pre-stretched. You can just be flat. Um, this is not prepped in any way, so um, it's just a raw canvas, but again, abstract expressionism is a very free movement, so if you want to prep it, you absolutely can. Um, the next thing that we have, we're going to use paint, obviously. We are using acrylic paint. These are just basic craft paints you can get at any craft store, and we're using primary colors. So we're using um, yellow, red, blue, and then we're also going to use black and white for shadow and highlight, just for contrast. Um, it's pretty common to use acrylic paint for abstract expressionism. You can use paints like um, watercolor or oil paints, um, but Jackson Pollock actually used acrylic and he used house paint, which you can find obviously at any hardware store. Um, so we're going to use acrylic paint. The next thing we're going to talk about is a palette. Um, Jackson Pollock, who the show is named after, did not use a palette. He just took the canvas or took the paint straight from the bucket and put it onto the canvas with a brush. But we have several types of palettes here. We have this palette, which is a watercolor palette. Um, it has the lid on it to dry the water or to keep the water from drying. We have this palette, which is an oil palette. As you can see, there's lots of paint on it because oil doesn't come off very easily and it takes a long time to dry. It's another reason to not use oil if you want your painting to dry quickly. Um, and we have here, which uh, this is a palette that I'm going to use today, that is basically a multi-purpose palette. You can use it with watercolor, which are what these little holes are for. You can use it for acrylic and you can use it for oil. Um, so that's a palette we are going to use. You also need to use brushes. Um, again, this is kind of a thing you can choose to do. Uh, we are going to use mostly a 20 gauge round and a 2 gauge round today, but you can put the paint on the canvas with any type of brush that you want to use. Um, so we are going to start with black and we're just going to make these basic lines on the canvas. And one of the things that sets abstract expressionism apart is um, that it uh, is a gestural type of painting. It basi it's based on movement and it matters a lot the way your arms move and um, how, how you put the paint on the canvas just through your own movement. It matters um, very little about composition. So we're just going to make these black lines and we're not going to think about like how they look or, um, or like overthink the composition. We're just going to put these black lines on the canvas. Um, Painting, uh, painting this way is a very messy style of painting, so um, you should probably put something down before you do this or do it outside in an area that you're not going to mess up your carpet or something like that. Um, so again, you're just not paying attention at all to like where the lines go. You're just letting your arm put the paint on the canvas. Um, like I said before, um, Abstract Expressionism was made famous by Jackson Pollock, who the show is named after, um, and he was really famous because of abstract expression or because of his splatter paint and abstract expressionism. And you can see these little um, little drops that are running down. That's that's a lot of what he did, and that's why he used acrylic because um, because it would run it ran easily. Um, so just make sure that you. Uh, you're doing this exactly where you want. We're going to go on to commercial now, clean out your brushes while we're gone, and we will be right back. Don't be one of the millions of people unprepared for the impending zombie apocalypse. I never knew about the serious likelihood of a zombie apocalypse until my friend Sam told me about the zombie apocalypse survival kit. Now I'm ready for a zombie apocalypse any day. 
Before the zombies eat it, use your brain and buy the zombie apocalypse. We're back with Painting Like Pollock, and as you can see, we have our black lines, and we're going to go back now with, um, with different colors. Uh, we're going to start with a, um, with a blue, and we're just going to go all around the black. And again, you're not worrying about how the colors mix. You're just like letting your arm flow um, on the canvas. Um, some other famous abstract expressionists are uh, William uh, de Kooning. He was a really famous gestural artist, and he painted using uh, oils, and uh, that's just a different style for abstract expressionism if you're interested. Um, another famous one was uh, Franz Klein. So like, if you need some inspiration, those are definitely artists you should check out. Um, one of my favorite artists, um, his name is Gorky, and he was a very famous abstract expressionist. He painted um, uh, very, very abstract pieces, and he had a very interesting method um, of inspiration. He uh, basically would deprive himself. He would spend um, a few weeks before he painted not sleeping or eating or anything like that, and then right before he painted his painting, he would do lots and lots of drugs. I would not recommend that you do that, but um, it kind of bodes itself to this type of painting because it is so free. Um, you're trying not to think about what you're doing. You're just trying to put the paint on the canvas. So we have some blue, and it's mixing in fairly well with the black. As you can see, I got some paint on my hand, so be prepared to get messy with this type of painting. And we're going to go in. We're going to just add some red um, just randomly on the canvas. Again, you're not thinking about where you're putting it. You're just letting your arm put it wherever it wants to go. And as you can see, um, I mean, accidentally, we already have these like nice flowing lines that are going through the canvas. Um, usually abstract expressionists didn't think about form or composition while they were painting. It wasn't until afterward when, you know, mu museum cu curators and, uh, and art critics would look at it and they would see this like the beautiful lines and the shapes um, that were going on in abstract expressionist pieces. Um, so we added some red, and we're going to go back now with some yellow to give some highlights. We're going to paint a lot of yellow to try to brighten it up. And if you get like some color mixing in, see how like my red mixed in there? That's totally fine. I mean, it's actually making a really beautiful orange. So a lot of it is about experimentation with abstract expressionism. So just you know, free your mind, let the painting do what it wants, and by the end you should have like a really amazing piece. Um, if you don't want your colors to mix, if you want just like a very straight, uh, solid color state like the painting you saw at the beginning, then you would need to paint each color separately. So we would have painted the black, and then we would have let the black dry, and then we would paint the red and let that dry, and then the blue. Um, but if you want your colors to mix, this is definitely the way to do it. Um, again, if you use a different, a different medium, uh, like watercolor, if you use that, you definitely have to let the colors dry because um, it will uh, it will mix all together and you'll just have one giant color and it, it won't be very pretty. Um, and with oil, it's a lot easier to mix oil if you want your color transition to be very smooth um, because oil is a very thick paint. So we're going to go back now um, and get a smaller brush and we're going to mix some white. And this is the two uh, round brush. And we're just going to make little detailed spots in here with the white to like catch your eye. Um, and you're trying to find areas on the painting that maybe don't have any action or don't have anything to catch your eye. Um, and you're just going to like try to get something to catch your eye right there. Um, but like I said before, abstract expressionism is uh, very free. You can check out paintings like this and other abstract expressionist paintings and just other types of work at our website, paintinglikepollock.com. There's a lot of very interesting stuff on there if you're interested in other kinds. And, um, we're going to do some splatter painting because this show is called Painting Like Pollock. So um, we're just literally filling the brush with color and splatting it onto the canvas. Um, you don't have to have a lot. You can use a lot if you want. If you want giant, uh, if you want giant splatters, you need to use a bigger brush. So like we'll get this brush, and you have like a much bigger um, paint splatter. So um, to finish it up, if you want your you if you want your trans, your color contrast back, you just do the green or the black and to finish it out. I hope you enjoyed this abstract expressionism. We will see you next week.